This is the Danger Close Podcast. Beyond the books with me, Jack Carr. Welcome to the Danger Close Podcast, an Ironclad original presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. My guest today is Duran Kedar. He is on the front lines of Israel's war against Hamas. His unit was mobilized on Saturday, October 7th, and he has been in the thick of it ever since. And now, without further ado, Duran Kadar. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, Ron, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. I mean, I know you're in the middle of it out there, and you have been since we were called up last Saturday. And you've been yes, sir. For over yes, a week sir. Now. You're one of the first units to get called up. And um, you hear that? What was it? Artillery? A jet. Oh, wow. You go, okay, so this is drowning out the sound for y'all. Oh, come on. Probably. So, in any case, if, if I have to if I have to run to shelter, uh, I had to do yeah. that the other day, then, uh, you know what I'm saying? We can we can pick it up later, correct? Like, you guys correct. do post edit and all? Okay, cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. Oh, but uh, so what I wanted to do, I have, uh, you know, I really try to, uh, you know, provide a little context for anybody out there that might uh, might be listening, watching, follow me. <laughs> Uh, just so they have yeah. a better foundation from which to, you know, make their own decisions and uh, uh, sure. build on whatever they they do know of the area <laughs> or don't know of the area and the situation. So um, I really wanted to humanize things a little bit instead of sure. talking top level level policymakers and talking geopolitically yes. and strategically. Yes. I wanted to same here. Uh, yes, sir. About what's going on on the ground yeah. right there, tactically. Because my political opinion doesn't matter. Well, I mean, it certainly right. doesn't right now with all, as you're on the gun. Yeah, but you, you go what I mean? Uh, I was interviewed today by CBN, good friends of mine, uh, Chris Mitchell. He's the head. Uh, uh, it's got a, you know, official uh, name, but basically he's their head reporter in Israel and has been for years. He's interviewed our SEALs and that kind of thing. I mean, he's a really cool guy. Do you guys call, how, how do you call our SEALs? So I understand from your community, because I know you've had overlapping, yeah. right? Yeah, like so either flotilla thirteen or or uh, uh, what's the what's the Israeli? I've only written the Israeli out. Uh huh. So so flotilla thirteen, which I'm sorry sounds gay, but yes, <laughs> I think well, it sounds better to say <laughs> in in, uh, in Hebrew. So in Hebrew, we call them we call them shayetet shlosrim. And and the security company I work for, by the way, uh, it's called BHS Security. It's founded by uh, seals, our seals. Um. And so right now, two of our, my CEO and CO are both in theater. <laughs> and so 90% of our guys, because we're tier one uh, operators that, that, that work the security uh, routine in our company, we're all out there. I'm not tier one, but I'm saying most, a lot of my guys are. So each one is in their respective units right now, getting a lot done. And so you can imagine for a company like ours that, that the whole point of why should you hire us? It's because we have the best uh, military background people, which doesn't necessarily mean they know how to do executive protection. There's a lot of guys that I, I have to boot, which by the way, I'm the guy who's mostly in charge of the field operations and our international um, relations because of my English, as you can tell. Uh, I don't talk like an Israeli and I can communicate. And if you were to talk to Yechiel, my uh, boss, it would be breaking teeth the whole time, and he'd be looking at me like, Doron, can you tell him already to <laughs> explain what I just said horribly? Um, so, yeah, it's really cool on the one hand, but it's uh, right now it's it's the worst. Um, since Yom Kippur War, there's nothing like this that's ever hit us. And so imagine Red, so Yom Kippur, which was soldiers that were mutilated, tortured, what have you. And one of them is a good friend of mine that I know for many years. His name's Reuven Duron. Um, and, and I know the stories from what he's told, which he only tells a little bit, of course, because it was that bad. And he was the lone survivor from his unit. Uh, I think he was a reconnaissance unit uh, for the armored corps. And, um, and so in this scenario, you have thousands of Israeli citizens, women, children that were tortured, mutilated, burnt alive, tied together 
in order to increase their torture, right? Because the partner, right, is tied to you while you're being tortured. So, you know, kind of stuff you could put in your next novel. If it's oh. not too... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle know. of it. Yeah, I'm in the middle of it right now. There is a, the last two, as you know, have had uh, in the yes. Israel um, Yeah, and, and I love that, by the way. Oh, thank you. Because, by the way, I'm I'm from the north. I grew up in Kiyach and I lived on the Golan Heights during my military service. So what you depict in the book, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know how you get your research, but if you ever need anything on the ground, by the way, feel so free it, to use me for, for any of that kind of stuff. Thank you. But it, totally, it totally went through my mind that, I, that's, uh, that, that surprise attack. Yeah. And it's like your mom are the ones that are getting their asses kicked. And I'm like, come on, man. Your mom doesn't, you know, they're, they got it. They know, got these are like, it. Yeah, yeah, they got after it, finished it up, and in my office. But, but that's what happened in real life. I wouldn't go down like that with those guys. Uh, well, that's what happened here, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Okay, so we can't talk about it yet uh, until it's uh, publicized. But we have good friends there, and some of them wanted to be in my detachment actually. But we, the military is dumb. So long story short, they can't join my unit right now. But um, they, the losses for those guys are heavy, and um, I'll I'll be able to tell you later. But put it like this, right? You're you're you're, you're well trained. You have everything, you know, dialed in. But there's there's civilians being, uh, how would you call it? I mean, they're they're you know, like what's happening to them. Point is, these guys got chopped down really bad because their emotions got the best of them. They ran into the homes, and the homes are elevated here, uh, kind of like in Florida in some places, but cement. And so when they went in to do, you know, house clearing. They would then come out and the terrorists would, in some cases, hid underneath uh, and then chop them down. You know, uh, I mean, hey, kudos to those guys. They did a good job. I mean, you know, good job on, on your tactics. And uh, so so lots of heavy losses uh, for the imam and every tier one unit in the country. Man. So. And I did want to ask yeah. you, where were you when you found out uh, last Saturday, so over a week ago, um, what was happening, and how did you, uh, how did you guys mobilize? Okay, so last Saturday, uh, so I keep Sabbath, right? My family, I don't, I'm not on my phone and that kind of thing. And what happened was, my wife wakes me up. I was dead asleep, and the whole house is shaking. Da 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 da, you know. And and she's like, honey, I think there's something wrong wrong and this is not normal and you know how your wife is <laughs> she's like you know something's up and i said okay and i'm trying to like wake up and you know figure things out she says i think something serious is happening i said okay let me let me check my phone so i pick up my phone and we have our unit uh messaging uh system and sure enough that thing is like loaded brawl you know hundreds of messages i'm like oh crap oh crap i was like here we go so i'm already you know switching gears to get my crap together and I'm going wherever it is, whatever it is, I'm going. So I have no clue what it is. Right. And I, we don't have a TV in our home. You know, we're homeschoolers. We're, we're the weirdos in my community. <laughs> and so, and so uh, I have no way to find out what the heck is happening unless of course I want to get onto the internet and whatever, but there's no time for that. I'm just scrolling through the messages as quick as I can to get as much info to understand what the heck is going on and what do I need to do to respond. So we got the message and we all started to get our gear together and head to the meeting uh, uh, point and get everything together. The commander, of course, who's a, he's a, my commander is a major. Um, we're 12 man team that support him and the efforts of the mission objectives for our unit, which is in essence to serve the paratrooper battalion okay so all the reconnaissance units all the special units of the of the uh the, the tip of the spear of the paratrooper units we're here to um i can't give specifics but we're here to help them in a the fight is what i can say um and so so yeah so he starts running down with us he says guys here's the deal here's what happened here's the information we're getting of what happened and as you probably already know, there was a lot of misinformation um, that that our intel had had kind of dropped the ball, apparently, which is not really the case. What happened is it was a very well planned attack. So for years now, um, 
they've been attacking the they the Palestinians have been you know flooding the the border fets and sometimes getting through and then back and and so basically testing our 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 uh, responses and so what happened was they did that again and as you know when things go in a routine in a loop you're like oh here they do it again and here da 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 but this time it was planned to where it, simultaneously they um, they mean in Hamas slash ISIS okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we found that paraphernalia on the battlefield uh, is the ISIS flags. Um, they had they had attacked our intel systems, right? And um, so what that means is is essentially that we didn't have eyes on what was happening, right? In the control centers that were watching the fence, and that's what lost us a lot of valuable time. And how these guys could uh, basically slaughter so many people for such a long time. I posted on my um, in, uh, social media um, page, and you see I'm quite active. Uh, it's not because I have a lot of time on my hands, but I've chosen to sacrifice sleep for feeding people information because I see it as is is a mission, you know, in a way that uh, because our community doesn't like to talk. You know, you know, you probably know how they talk about our guys, the Anshad, the Mama, the the silent professionals, <laughs> and so that's that's our community. We don't like to draw attention. A lot of guys, um, you know, some of my guys, of course, also don't pre, pre not my unit, but but you know, people in my community will be like, why do you go post this and why do you go post that? Because because nobody's doing it, and if somebody's doing it, it's some idiot in tactical gear. Uh, what do you call it? A, like a airsoft, trying to you know want to be, and it's misrepresentation. So it's I feel it's a, in a way my mission to number one represent the community in a in a respectful way, and also to give good information to citizens around the world to understand what Israel's dealing with. And God has blessed me with bilingual, technically trilingual Swedish, if you want to count that in, because my wife's Swedish. And so I know a little, you know, proto svenska också. Um, but God's giving me that gift, and I feel it's important to use it. And He's given me the gift of being able to understand the American mindset. Um, I got friends in Texas and Florida, and you know, from the community, uh, uh, from the different uh, special forces community, and um, and so that gives me a, a wider perspective that most of us don't have, right? You know, who grew up here and only know Hebrew and only know what we know. And so all that to say, it to me, it's a mission to get the word out and to get it out respectfully. And, 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 and of course, constantly with my peers, making sure I don't cross the line of, of uh, operational, uh, you know, secrets that are being revealed. And um, so. How far you didn't have to worry. We guys far enough away family wise where um, you could leave and get in the fight without worrying too much about the family say that one more time were you far enough away when you got that word that you could go and jump get into the fight right away without having to worry too much about your family is your family okay do you feel confident oh no 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 not at all so when i left my family was getting attacked by by rocket barrage the oh. sirens were going off and they were in the bomb shelter um <clears throat> I was, of course, extremely concerned once I reached the base and found out what the attack was because I knew and know the capabilities of these um, animals, okay? And they're professional. I'll give them the respect. They they did a professional job. They got trained well, probably in the Bucca Valley by the Iranians, um, and they did a good job. They executed well, and so I'm expecting a Red Dawn scenario that they're also going to go after my wife and kids. And I'm here, you know, I'm the only one in my family that's uh, able to protect them. None of my uh, other family members are uh, military background because my brother-in-law is Swedish, my father-in-law is Swedish. And so we, we have three families that live in that reality. And um, so they're vulnerable. The minute I hit the road, they are vulnerable. And, uh, and, and, and what's going through my mind is scenarios of, what happens if those bastards get to my house and do I have to 
consider, you know, the, 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 you know, the, uh, you know, the James Reese, like, do I, am I going to have to fight that revenge? You know, now, right. You got your weapon on you and it's, you got your gear. It's like, okay, well, screw this. I'm going over there and getting, getting some, right. Um, those kind of scenarios that you're fighting against your mind of that's not cool. Forget it. Don't think about it. God forbid it happens. My boys are here to, you know, <laughs> make me do the, make the right decision. And, um, talking about my men, uh, I have to brag about them. My unit is comprised of some of the best war fighters in the country, hands down, par none. In contrast to most units, you get, uh, like you guys do the pipeline of the SEAL pipeline and you're SEAL, two, SEAL, SEAL Team 2, and then you might be able to bounce around four, five, six, what have you. Uh, but it's the SEAL Team community, right? That's the pipeline. It's not like you're, you're a Marine and uh, one day... Uh, the military decides, oh, we're going to attach you to a SEAL team. You get to be part of SEAL Team 3 here. Congratulations. You you know, whatever, right? You perform well on the battlefield. I don't know, whatever. Um, it doesn't work like that. Um, here, it's like that. You, you know, the unit that you started with is the one you're going to continue with in your reserve duty, typically. Um, and so the, the, the unit that we comprised and that's doing what we do, and my major who got the who got the request to create this unit for the paratrooper uh, battalion because we actually started elsewhere for the much more uh, specialized community. But then the paratrooper said, we want you your capabilities as well. So we actually had to break up our team and our brothers <laughs> and, and choose who's going to go with the major and who's going to stay and get a new commander and then keep things running as we left it. Um, <clears throat> so, so the, the men that I'm with, everyone's handpicked. My commander said, if I'm going to get to build this team that you're requesting, I pick them. I pick the guys. So that's why we're different. And every everybody sees it. Everybody sees that we're different. And the Internet is, is uh, I've noticed on Reddit, thinks that we're Matkal. And I have a brother and an and a uncle who works in the whatever department. And he call, he told me for sure these are, you know, Makal. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I hope that's what the enemy's thinking too, because yeah, we are, we are pretty hardcore guys. We're all security professionals in our day-to-day -day lives. Me being executive protection, I do tour guiding and I do um, Israel, uh, Israel diplomacy uh, work, right? And I make films. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I do a lot of things. And, but most of my other guys, they are 100 percent security companies, uh, work for some of the top firms. And so we live that life in our day to day life. So transitioning back to reserve is nothing. And so everyone's a, a, a gear geek. Everyone's a weapon geek. You get what I'm saying? And it's like we know our stuff. So the first time I feel safe going out because the missions we've had are the dangerous most dangerous i've ever had to do in my military career and i served in the gaza strip originally i used to i started in uh givati uh givati is the purple beret guys and uh before the pullout from gaza that gaza was ours and so we gained a lot of experience fighting hamas and uh, yeah one of the worst battlefields known to man in my opinion um, maybe Mogadishu is a little bit worse, <laughs> uh, debatable, but um, it's it's hardcore. And um, so thank God I had that military experience and it wasn't special forces. Um, but these men uh, allowed me to be part of this team um, because of my mindset, because of my other skills. And thank God I get to be with them because I feel so safe with these men. I've been with the other uh, units uh, up till now and it's very hard to jive when you're like that guy who's got a different mindset and so imagine putting a SEAL guy for example and attach him to a group of I don't know Marines you know think about Chris Kyle for example uh, comes to mind and how he's like holy shit these guys are getting themselves killed they don't know the tactics let me go train them if that's true <laughs> you know from what I read in his book um so I know that feeling of being that guy, but I don't have the pedigree to to to, to prove it. Uh, I didn't come from that, um, but I had a different mindset. And um, 
and it just made it to where you feel like you're the only one kind of watching for everybody's back and yourself included. Um, in this case, uh, I'm in the safest place possible. And I wanted to ask you, when you got that call, you have your M4 and your gear ready to go. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. On your house. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It's on base. The M4 is on base. Okay. What I have, and if you see the weapon, yeah, you guys can see the pictures, what have you, okay, is a tricked out M4 because every one of us, like I said, are weapons geeks. Yeah, yeah. And so we, Scott, sorry. I noticed that from your Instagram. I could, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. You go get your gear and, and check out all the, uh, everything that you're, you're running there. Well, you know, I am American. I do have a Texas, uh, uh, you know, Texas, uh, um, residency on paper. And, uh, you can only imagine what kind of people I get to hang around with and, uh, go hog hunting with my, uh, here's a shout out by the way, to my, uh, uh, fast team, uh, DA fast team brother. I'm not going to say his name because of, you know, he's still uh, operational, um, not the unit, but the work he does. And, uh, so here's a shout out to you, brother, <laughs> and uh, and the fun times that we got to uh, go hog hunting with him, which of course helps me, you know, hone in my skills and what we're doing now. Um, and I only wish I could have half of that gear on what I have here. Um, so yeah, so we can trick out our stuff a little bit, but you know, there's certain limitations to that because Israel's gun laws are very stringent. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Do you think any of that'll <laughs> change after this and i wasn't aware because you know we see a lot of pictures over here uh whether it's just on instagram or a magazine or whatever it is and you see uh people walking around with uh with m4s or m16s you know um sure. uh and you're like oh look at look at that everybody's armed over there that's 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 awesome that's the idea yeah <laughs> but it's only military yeah. Okay. yeah so they can keep their that's weapons fun. in their homes and no they're, no like, they still have no no I'll put it like this. <clears throat> There's different rules now. They've changed since my time. Um, I've served since 2003 to give you a ballpark of my military, you know, how long. Um, technically, based on my age, I should have uh, started in 99. So I'm 42. Um, it's a long story. I had to delay my service. So I ended up with a bunch of kids during my time and uh, it was fun. So during the 2003 era, the weapon was with you all the time. And then that that changed and some idiot uh, decided because they're afraid of negligent discharges that the weapons stay on base or they're afraid that the weapons will get stolen from the homes because it wasn't properly stored and locked away because nobody has gun safes here like you guys have in the States. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, the gun culture that you guys have in the States does not at all come close to what we have here. So, so it's on base and or, if uh, like now I'm on duty and let's just say we were to get downtime and I get to go home, I go with it. It goes with me and it has to stay with me the whole time. It doesn't go out of my sight. Um, so that's, you know, our, our again, our gun laws are very stringent because, again, we have terrorists that if they steal them, we'll use them to commit the atrocities that you guys heard about and that we're now trying to um, eliminate those threats uh, that have come on our onto our um civilian population yeah i just had a, yeah. a different idea i guess because of um you know <laughs> yeah reading, uh, you know reading time magazine newsweek uh, looking at encyclopedia britannica or whatever and seeing those black and white photos of the kibbutz you know in the 50s and 60s and people are out there with old rifles just defending i mean stand, you know women standing guard standing in their post yep, yep. And they're incredible photos and for whatever reason yeah um, you know, that kind of morphed for me anyway, into uh, I'm seeing people walking around with like uh, M16s, iron sights, you know, <laughs> yeah. and all thing, uh, just in the streets, probably in the 90s, early to early, early 2000s before things like you said changed. Um, yeah, I just figured that there was private I didn't look into it um, and uh, private gun ownership, but there is no private gun ownership in Israel. There is personal carry. Okay. Um, so, so I, that's what I'm carrying on my hip, for example. So I carry a Glock 45, uh, Moss with all the doodads. Thanks to get again, another good brother from, uh, <laughs> from, uh, ca uh, California. 
He's uh, a SWAT operator and he is more of a gun geek than I am by far. And uh, he told me, he says, Doran, you need to do this and you need to get this. And so he basically coached me and I said, brother, I said, you know how hard that gun is to get here? Because the only ones who have that particular weapon are a very, very small um, community of operators. Uh, and you're lucky if you get a uh, was an overflow into the civilian world. And I got very lucky right after my buddy told me and said, you should get one of these and and I'll help you trick it out um, and, and, you know, recommend what to do to it. Um, and so that's what I'm carrying. Thanks to, again, people that are you know, coaching me because uh, I'm not an expert in, in all these things. Um, but yeah, so you can get a, a personal carry. It's a very stringent legal bureaucracy. I've been working executive protection since 2007 ish, give or take. It took me till 2015 to be able to arm myself with my own private carry at being doing what I do and having a combat a uh, background and and actually I'm a, also a commander background an NCO um, and none of that was good enough uh, you had to actually be an officer rank for many years and then they finally dropped it to NCO and now they're dropping it again by the way because of this uh, red dawn attack that we've had and realizing our civilians are freaking vulnerable imagine that you know I was and, under a completely different impression um just like I said, from those photos and things I'd read, of, you know, from the inception of Israel up until today, I just kept some, uh, initial, yeah. uh, you know, uh, kept yeah. lots of assumptions. Um, so do you think that it'll, it'll change after this? Do you think there'll be a push to uh, arm the citizenry? It's changing. Yeah. They've, they've changed the law already. They're putting, they're putting it in, in effect. And okay. So who do, who does get also to carry an AR, for example, a platform is, when the when the it's through the military and the military arms civilians first responders in high risk communities like the ones that got attacked for example so so they do have ARs and again they're crappy they're not the good kind but they are what they are and they're obviously good enough because my good friend who lives on one of those communities uh, their team destroyed the bunch of guys that tried to get into his community I mean he annihilated those guys. OK, so yeah, that's, that's a little that's, message. Yeah, that's that a message because he because he's a first responder in his community. He didn't have to and go he, to the armory. He didn't have to go to base and come nope, back. Nope. It's on him. It's on him. It's on him. It's but it's the same rules like with me. It has to be with you. The wow. first responders, they do have the weapons on a on a on a on a team that's that's on ready. Right. So so you're on rotation in that community. And so that's what I'm saying. So my buddy, he had. um trying to get this where I see it. There it is. So my buddy, what he did is him and his team that were on call, they had their weapon and he also has a sidearm and they annihilated the attack on their community. Annihilated. Another good friend who used to be a team member, by the way, in one of the other communities, terrorists broke into his house. Horrible mistake. He's one of the fastest, most accurate shooters I know. That, that guy hit the dirt or the floor the hard floor rather before he even knew what hit him. So a message to our enemies. Yes. Our gun laws might make it hard for us to defend ourselves and what have you. And that's debatable for whoever wants to talk about it. I'm not going to make an issue about it. Um, I'm more American minded in the sense of, you know, um, I think people should be, uh, have the ability to, to defend themselves, but I also take it a step further. And I feel that if you are armed, you have to have training because a trained armed uh, civilian is much more effective than an untrained one who is actually a danger when something happens and they just go firing at will and you actually kill and, or wounded other people that, you know, so that's my opinion on that. And I know a lot of the American crowd might, you know, get a little up in arms about it. That's fine. You know, uh, it's my opinion and I'm entitled to it. <laughs> um, so, so, so yeah, we we have people like myself, we train year round. We are part of shooting clubs. Um, uh, shout out to the IDPA here in Israel. I train with them all the time. One of my team members, by the way, or two of them are IDPA uh, shooting instructors. So I get trained all the time. So every one of us, if you're going to engage with us, you're going to wish you didn't because uh, we're keeping it fresh. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Describe your last week. So when you packed up your vehicle, went grabbed your grabbed your weapon, headed to your staging area. What was the what's the last week been like for you? <clears throat> it's been hell, <clears throat> to put it plainly. Uh, because everything has hit us so fast, and it's been very hard to you know to to catch up with 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 the changing events, right? Um, and so, so for the last week, it's, 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 uh, been day one, trying to get Intel and understand what the heck we're up against. Number two, let my major and, and his commanders above him drop plans and then, uh, get gear, get, 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 uh, uh, get zeroed in and operate, execute missions. And so what it has been then, therefore, without giving too much details, because my, again, my major made sure to tell me that I got to be very careful about what I say. So um, I'm sorry if I can't be more detailed. But we have been at the forefront of the battles down in the um, the Gaza, uh, what, what is known as the Gaza Envelope. And um, so we we have been operating all along those areas that have are very very uh, hard to work in. We have uh, come under extreme threat for our lives in some cases, right? And um, also, I would say that <laughs> the soldiers, of course, are very curious. <laughs> um, they're not used to people doing interviews. I bet. As you can tell. Well, after we're done, be so, sure and uh, tell them I said hey, and and uh, please give them my uh, my best. Thank you, you, sir. So yeah, so it's it's so again, it's been it's been uh, drawing up plans, execute, drawing up plans, execute, and of course, get a little sleep, drone, get a little less sleep, <laughs> because I've been um, I've been really working around the clock to make sure people know what's happening, trying to plug people in on how to help our guys. Stay in the fight because, again, we're disconnected from our homes from day one. So, of course, you know, the the uh, your, what's it called in English? You're missing your family is increasing every day, um, depending on who your wife and children are. If you know if you have that, that dynamic and and or is there anybody sick? OK, uh, one of my men, uh, not the one that operates with me, but one of the men that I know here that that serves in our, um, in our bigger, uh, group here. Um, for example, his wife is battling cancer and she just went in for her next chemo treatment while he's here. And we're having to, you know, discuss that and trying to help him process that hellish reality. Just a minute. Okay, that's our people. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, <clears throat> um, so uh, we're yes, sir. So it's it's you can imagine. So everybody has a different dynamic. I've been very blessed with a very strong woman, and a very strong family dynamic that is helping the home front. Simultaneously, my brother-in-law who is a pastor of a church in Dallas, Texas at, um, uh, at on, uh, un, uncommon church. I think it's called uncommon church, um, in Dallas, Texas, they have a big Israel flag that they put up and their, their church is one off of one of the interchanges or highways there. So like whoever's driving past there sees this big Israel flag at the church. And so he's come in and left his wife and kids back home in the States to help us, right? To help us uh, via my instruction of, I'll give you an example, because we rush to the battlefield and to our mission objectives, then then you have to catch up with logistics and whatever, right? It just is what it is, because my guys are, they're, they're pipe hitters, they're eager. They wanna get in the fight. We don't need anything fancy. Just give us weapons and we'll sleep on the dirt if we have to. So at the same time, we're older and we need better sleeping conditions than we used to, you know, be able to tolerate. So we got air mattresses for everybody, right? So we can basically uh, save our backs <laughs> and whatever limbs. Um, 
and stuff like that. Little things like that, that is that it's pinpointed, right? Because I'm here. I know what's needed. Um, again, there's a lot of civilians and a lot of uh, efforts to support the troops and money that's being uh, raised. But, um, you know, it's a lot of it also unfortunately gets wasted on things we don't need. So that's my mission is to use my nonprofit that I have in the States, which, uh, yeah, you know, has been what's the nonprofit? Yep. I, I've linked to it uh, in the in the past. But what is yes, it? Sir. People find it. It's called, if you just go to our website, it's cryforzion.com. Um, that, that nonprofit is for educating on Israel and the Temple Mount and, 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 uh, and all that pertains to that. But also, it's actually a caveat from what I did in, back in 2012 called Project Gideon, inspired from the story of the biblical story of Gideon, the few against the many. And, um, right about it in the first book. So, Yes, sir. <laughs> That's right. I remember that. And uh, and so I thought that was cool, of course. <laughs> and so what 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 I did is I raised funds to help to help uh, direct funds directly to the soldiers so that we were ready for the next battle from the lessons learned from 2006 war, Lebanon war, the second Lebanon war. And so uh, I started Project Gideon. And so it's all the same account. It's just a, the 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 naming and the and the and the education has changed, but it's the same five hundred one c three that that basically meets different specific needs. And one is uh, uh, preparing uh, uh, communities to defend themselves. So I'm, for example, purchasing weapons for people that are going to get their gun license now, and that I've preached to years for to get your gun license. I'm like, brother, you serve in the special forces. Get a freaking gun. What is wrong with you? I don't need it, you know. Ah. And now he calls me up and and I said, hey, how's it feel to be unarmed? You know, and so I said, get your paperwork together and I will buy you a gun. It's that simple. So that's example of where those funds go. It's where it's needed. And it's to to. Uh, yeah. You know, just like you execute any mission. Right. You're you're on the ground. You see what you need. You adjust. You 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 better your position. You make adjustments what's, when we're needed. And then you you know you're smoother in, in, in your operation, and so that's what I'm doing for my guys, and then other guys all throughout that are feeding me with intel and saying, I'll give you another example. Up in the north, we just um, took care of a group of guys of the first responders I talked about that needed needed uh, communications, radio communications. Done. We got it. We have the funds because of people like you who have been. Um, sending support to us um, and praying for us, you know, that makes us make that happen for these people and, and meet the needs where they're needed. And it's not just random, you know, you know, let's buy a hundred radios and then just distribute it randomly. No, I'm meeting specific needs and I don't just give every guy who comes knocking on my door saying, I need this. I say, okay, what are you, what are you doing? What's your operation? What's your plan? If you're not serious, you're not getting nothing from me. With all due respect, you know, and that's how that's that's where those funds are going. They're going to the most dire needs to help in the most important areas. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not perfect. It's uh, based on what I personally know. And if anybody wants to better help me with that, please feel free. Come here. We'll pay you a salary and you can help me with operations. Thank you. You know, because um, I'm doing two things at the same time here or five. It feels like. Um, because I don't know if you know, but um, Tim Kennedy's bringing in group here with Save Our Allies. So they've gotten our assistance, is all I can say. <laughs> uh, Victor Marx is coming here with his group to do uh, their work with trauma treatment, uh, lion and lambs, uh, uh, giving uh, toys to children that have been traumatized. And so they're taking their expertise and I'm plugging them in here in Israel to the, the dire needs. So Victor and his team are a group of an amazing group of professionals. Um, he's got a guy from your community. He's got a guy from uh, other communities of the special forces groups who, who know how to, to do what we know how to do. And they're going to be assisting him. And they've been assisting my, uh, my team here and making sure we get a bunch of they're doing a lot for us is all i can say and so a huge shout out to all things possible 
if you guys want to fund a good work that is doing direct uh, um, need making, uh, need uh, meeting needs here in Israel, they're doing it. They're doing it over and beyond. I made a small request from those guys. And then they just, it's like, as we say in Hebrew, you take a finger and you get the whole hand, you know, but it's reverse. It's like, I just, all I said was like, hey, I'm good with just this. And they're like, no, no, we're going to do this. I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> like, thank you. So, so, so really, really huge shout out to those guys. They're doing an incredible job to help us and God willing, uh, they'll be here soon. And him and his team are going to do what they know best. And, um, and uh, yeah, help us assess the hell that we've been through and uh, also get get uh, get them to help also the civilians and so on that have been through all of this uh, horrible, horrible uh, uh, attack. And uh, I, I don't know what to call it, to be honest. I don't have words for this uh, type of evil. It's evil. It's demonic. It's evil. That's it. Do you have uh, Follow what you wish. There? Your unit or people you're you're working with out there, Israel being such a, a small country, are there people who have lost uh, have lost loved ones that have not been able to to go home and 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 comfort anyone who survived or who are just out there on the front lines with you? Like how prevalent is that? It yes. seems like a must it have is. A connection to someone yes. slaughtered massacre. Exactly, exactly. What we just said that's it. It's that small of a community. We all have someone we've lost. Um. We, of course, have the intel um, from whoever's fallen. And um, the first days, because I knew my guys were called up as well for my company and other friends of mine that I know and, and that are in the different uh, special forces community and that are going to be the first ones to engage. Um, at first, I was an idiot and I said, hey, who, who is the name of that guy? Who is the name of that guy? You know, you want to know, is it one of your friends? Um, after that, after the first day, I told him, I said, well, I didn't say anything. I just was like, okay, forget that. That's stupid. That is stupid because I don't need to be carrying on my, uh, psyche, the loss of God knows how many of my good friends. So, uh, I'm literally closing that off so I can operate. So that's what we're fighting right in a psychological level that is beyond ever I've ever, that I've ever been. And, um, and yeah, I've lost people uh, also in warfare, close friends. Um, I don't know if you recall, in 2004, we had what was known as the uh, APCs in Gaza that got rocketed. It was a sapper unit from the uh, special forces group of Givati. The, the, their specialty is sapper, you know, explosions. And <clears throat> they had a huge amount of explosive, explosive devices in their in their APC, you know, like the Vietnam era APCs. Yeah. <laughs> and so they were leaving an operation that they had done in, um, uh, in the Gaza, in the, on the border to Egypt, uh, the Fiach there. And an RPG hits the one Humvee, uh, sorry, APC, and then a chain reaction blows up the second one. So two APCs obliterated to nowhere. It just disappeared. Yeah. So the famous pictures that you'll see from that, conflict it, that went viral of course in the news and all that was my commander course that i was in that got called up there and we were digging through the sand while being shot at by terrorists in egypt and in gaza trying to collect pieces of our uh, men that had been uh, scattered a two kilometer radius including into egypt because they were driving right along the border to israel and egypt so we had to get special permission to go into egypt and retrieve those, you know, human remains to the best of our ability. And if I remember correctly, correctly, it was six men that were killed. And those were men from my uh, service, from our my recruitment, and one of which was my best friend. Um, so he got smoked. <laughs> and here I am, you know, and I, I actually chose not to be part of, the, of that group of guys digging through the sand. I stuck to other operations on that uh, particular day. Because I could not stomach doing that. Yeah. You know, just the thought of holding a piece of my best friend's, you know, remains. So, so yeah, we've, we've been there. We've done that. We have the experience. We've lost people. We know what it's like. And, um, but again, we're trained and we're experienced and we're bringing all that to the plate here 
in our capabilities in my unit. And there's plenty of other units with our capabilities that are, we're going to give these bastards hell is all I'm going to say. They're going to regret ever doing that to us. If you look at last Saturday, last Saturday, Sunday as a uh, phase one, yeah. Let's say of a yeah. Hamas operation incursion yeah. into Israel, slaughtering innocent civilians. Proxy Iran, proxy uh, Iran. So proxy Russia, because yeah. we're taking attention off of Ukraine. I'm a conspiracy theorist, right? You can call me what you want. Uh, to the viewers, I'm saying, not you, uh, Jack. Um, but this is what I know to be true from intel. If you guys don't like that, it doesn't sit well with whoever you are, then you know what? I'm here. You're not. So come here, experience what I'm experiencing, and, and you tell me you tell me it's not those people. <laughs> so if there's a if that's a so, phase one, and what yeah. you know about uh, your enemy from living in that in that region, from living essentially in that Gaza, <laughs> having been there, um, what do you think the end state of let's say a phase two is? If they if phase one was going into Israel, committing these atrocities, and then getting back to Gaza or sacrificing themselves for the cause on on in Israel. Um, what is their plan, do you think, for phase two? Is it to draw Israel into Gaza and have uh, roads heavily IED'd and draw draw Israel in there to to uh, have as many casualties as they can, and to have as many that CNN effect where uh, as many mm -hmm. much collateral damage put up there across the, the world stage. Is that a plan to distract from other geopolitical events like, let's say, U.S., is Israel, Saudi, normalizing <laughs> relations? What is phase yeah. two, do you think? I think? I think what you said was spot on. <laughs> I can't say for... Yeah, it does, I'm sorry, but but let me just say what you just said is a very very good assessment. Is what I'll say. And and we're prepared. Is, and again, we're yeah. prepared. And if we're that prepared. is too, um, <clears throat> how concerned? Oh, man, I'll, I'll, I'll switch it up. Is that? There, there's, <laughs> well, let me tell you this. Is, yes, we are fully aware of a multi-front war. I don't know if you heard about what's happening up in the north. A little bit. Here in Israel. Talking. I don't know if the media is talking about it, because honestly, I haven't seen any media. Everything I've been posting is what I know, <laughs> being on the front lines here. So keep in mind, Jack, that we're talking about a uh, we're, we're you know, we're aware of a an attempt to bring us into a multi front uh, conflict. And so we're prepared. So go ahead, guys, you know, do your best. We'll do ours. Man, oh, you're in. Uh, I mean, you're in the in the thick of it. You have been all week. Um, I'm thinking yes, of a week plus now. It's been a week and two days. I'm counting, yeah. Jack. I'm counting these days. Okay, it's yeah. those two days are valuable two days away from our homes. <laughs> uh, when you when you when you're talking to the guys out there, like the guy who just stopped stopped by, uh, it would seem that they're at the tactical level. I'm just guessing that. No one is going to settle for a return to the status quo after what just happened, meaning a tolerable level yeah. of violence coming out of Gaza. That's I will tell you, that's the sentiment of the people here. But again, as a as a as a commander in the Israeli army, in the reserves of my detachment, we follow orders. Yep. And so we're going to have to do what we're called to do. And that's what we're focusing on. And my political opinion and and or. Uh, what I would prefer is, like I said originally in the beginning here, is irrelevant. It is relevant to me, absolutely. Um, would I like would I like to see Israel step up our how would you call it our yeah that the status quo needs to change? Absolutely. Uh, I don't I don't agree with that status quo. In fact, I fought like I told you in two thousand and three. Uh, in Gaza it was the first time I found myself in Gaza a after the pullout in 2005 ever since uh, I feel personally like the nation mainly the government has let down our citizens along the Gaza envelope here that's my opinion I was fully aware to lay down my life to to keep to keep them safe here and um, throughout the years I have come here and developed relationships with um 
the first responders, trying to help them, by the way, get 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 ballistic helmets, <clears throat> proper ballistic uh, uh, plate armor for, for, for their daily day lives to secure these communities. And they're lacking those things <clears throat> simply because any of the gear that they have is dependent on the funds that is uh, raised by that local community, right, to kit them out. And so your preference is going to go to medical and what have you and what have you. So something like a ballistic helmet or, or plate is going to be secondary and or that ballistic plate has been hit with your engagement with the terrorists, like some of my friends that have engaged with the terrorists. So now you need a new one. Well, tough crap. We only had enough for one for you, brother. <laughs> and so and so that's the problem. And I'm trying to help them as much as I can, because I feel a personal a personal need to to be involved in however I can to restore that that safety and security to these people that I felt like many of you felt when you left Afghanistan, we left them vulnerable. That's not what we fought to do. We didn't fight and lose men just so we could up and leave and let the whole the whole area turn to crap. You know, I'd encourage people. Um, are you still there? Oh. Oh, there we go. You know, uh, I'd encourage people listening to um, look at a map of it. Like, start with geography. Yeah. Go look at a map. There you go. Of Israel. <laughs> see where Gaza is. See where the West Bank is. Um, see where 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 Hezbollah is in the north. Uh, look at where Egypt is. Um, and I think understanding geography is uh, mm -hmm. a foundational element that allows you to understand what's happening in Israel right now. So, I encourage people who are listening or watching this, uh, who, if they don't. If they're not uh, already aware, to pull out a map and just look, and just look at that, look at that terrain, look at that that geography. Uh, look, look who's to uh, to the west, look who's to the north, look where Gaza is, look where Egypt is, and just get a get a better sense of what's going on down there. Yeah, and it's so hard for 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 me, and I know uh, untold thousands of others to just watch this on the news and think, oh, if only, if only there were people who were armed. To defend against yeah. a version like this, and essentially you're living next to an armed garrison that once you get with leadership and organization that mm -hmm. you get. I mean, like this, yeah. and I'm pointing like a few hundred yards away. Like there it you're is, right. and I'm not you're right for some reason. I can't defend myself. I can't have a an M4, or a Galil, or something like that uh, in my home to defend my family um, when the threat is there and the people telling me. I mean, they're not too far away in in, in maybe you know or in in government offices, but but I'm close. Oh yeah, I'm right here. I'm the first line of defense Correct. for Israel, and it seems like that that first line of defense could be so much more powerful and better utilized yeah. by arming. The yeah. Population. At least allowing them to take that that uh, uh, the defense of their lives, their families' lives, the country into their own hands. Because, um, as you know, being in the in the uh, in the industry that you're in, those politicians certainly are surrounded by people with guns. That's exactly it. I mean, it just seems like I mean, those yeah. people who are making these uh, laws are are surrounded by people defending their lives, usually utilizing like fire. people like me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Easy to make that call when you got a guy like me on your side, right? It certainly is. In a yeah. secured building. <laughs> and then here you uh, go. Easy. The Gaza envelope, not allowed to defend your life, the lives of your family members, your community, your country. Um, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you this. Stomach. I'll, yes, sir. I'll tell you this. If anybody is interested in helping these first responders, you let me know. I will get the funds and the means to those men. Those brave men, those heroes. By the way, let me highlight one gentleman, um, a cop. There was a cop who saved 500 lives. 500 lives. I posted that on my uh, social media. You can go look it up on my page. I want to shake that man's hand because he did the unbelievable. It's one thing for a guy like me or one of my guys who are very well trained. And as you know, Jack, the law enforcement in the United States isn't that well trained, at least not your beat cop. And that's what this guy was. He was not some high swick nothing, but he stepped up to the plate and helped defend and get those civilians away and got wounded. 
And his only words were, I wish I could have saved many more. Or I knew I could save many more, he said, to, to, to translate his Hebrew statement better. I knew I could have saved many more. Wow. <laughs> I love these kind of people. Um, we're trying to, for my family and my capability, to, we're trying to acquire a proper security vehicle. I know some of these first responders also want that. But the reason why I want one is so I can help and assist them because I have uh, a ton of gear. Let's be real. I mean, I got a ton of gear. Uh, I've, I've, I'm ahead of the curve here to most people. I have my body armor. In fact, one of my guys who's going to go uh, help them, I, I told him, you, you go to my house and you go get what I have left behind and you join the fight. You join these men. You're welcome to anything I have in my house. Take it because I had to go real fast. Um so, yeah, so one of the things I'm trying to acquire is a proper um, vehicle. And uh, I think we're both on the same mindset of what that is. And it's not the Land Rover. Sorry. Toyota's better. <laughs> for, for many reasons. Listen, I love, I love the Land Rover. It's a beautiful car, but it's total trash with the electronics. So <laughs> the, Brit the British messed it up there, and I don't want a headache. So oh, man. Um, uh, and you know, I want you to get some sleep and I appreciate you taking this time. I know we keep going in and out here because you're on the, on the front lines, but, uh, yes, your Instagram, uh, people want to follow you on Instagram and link to the things that you have, uh, going on yes, date with what you're going on. What's that Instagram? Uh, it's just my name. I think it's either Daron Kedar or Kedar Daron, uh, D O R O N, not Dorian <laughs> D O R O N. Uh, K-E-I-D-A-R is my last name. And if you Google that on uh, on uh, Instagram or Facebook, those are the two ones I normally use. I can't stand TikTok and all these other goofy things. Uh, I just want to keep people informed. And so I do my best on those two platforms with my uh, ability. And you can go to cryforzine.com if you yep. want to follow what we do with that. We have Temple Mount Report YouTube. And that's about it. So if you want to look up Temple Mount Report, you got, you know, there's tons of educational videos that we do. Uh, we talk about Ord Wingate. He's the founder of the IDF. And I use him as, a, as an example of what Christian Zionists can do to help support the state of Israel. Because it was Christian Zionists that actually got behind the Jewish Zionist movement. It was birthed out of Christian Zionism. We didn't have that beforehand. Jews didn't think that we could defend ourselves. And then here comes this crazy British uh, uh, major who says, hey, let's make night raids to fight the Arabs. And that's and he's as far as I understand. And you can correct me if I'm wrong with my military history. He was one of those that helped contribute to the Green Beret mentality of you train the local forces, you teach them to fight and let them fight their war. We're not going to send troops over there and you know get slaughtered. So he never lost the war. He helped liberate, uh, I believe it was er Eritrea. I always br brutalize the name. He came to Palestine at the time and started the Jewish night raids to help the British. And then the British didn't like him because he was too pro-Zion. And so they sent him to, to, um, to Burma. And then his plane is believed to have been, uh, you know, messed with by his, uh, his uh, other uh, haters. Um, and the plane went down with a bunch of American soldiers. So he's buried in Arlington Heights. But our offices, the Cry for Zion offices, were in the former residence of Ord Wingate. And so I know a ton about, you know, Ord Wingate and him being the father of the IDF. He is the father of the IDF that nobody knows about. Uh, uh, Diane, you know, the eye patch guy, he was his soldier. He trained him. And uh, any case, so we have educational videos like that that, talk, that highlight these people. And so so the vein in which I operate is in Christian Zionism, educating Christian Zionists. That's my target audience. Um, that's my personal background. My father was a Christian Zionist. He served in the Navy in World War II. He lied about his age. He was 15 years old and then learned electrical engineering, apparently, through his military pipeline. And when he went into the civilian world, was one of the top contractors that built Fort Lauderdale in Miami. And then he got contracted by a good friend who knew he was a cuckoo Zionist and loved Israel. 
to be one of the contractors to build the bases here in Israel as part of the Sinai Agreement. So that's how I ended up here with this goofy accent and my American heritage. Um, and then years later did Jewish conversion. And so, so my story is, is, is very much connected with the Zionist, Christian Zionist, Jewish Zionist vein, because I see those as, as, as a spiritual cause that if, you know, if it's not grounded in, in something and it's just like, well, you know, it's a good idea. What? Well, that's nice for you, but I need something more than that. And for me, the inspiration is God's word. It's the scripture and how you put that into action in your in your daily uh, life um, and what we do. And so I see a pattern here that when you have, have you know, people who have good, deep roots um, and know what they're doing and have a good cause, then it births amazing results. So the birth, the rebirth of the state of Israel. Thank you to the Christian Zionists and people like my father. The rebirth, not the rebirth, the first fighting force since the Maccabees. Thank you, Ord Wingate. Okay. So uh, we have a lot to credit the Christian Zionists. And um, and again, it's a very general term. There's a lot of Christian Zionists per se I don't, I don't like because I think I, we disagree. Anyhow, we have a different opinion. And I know that can get a very marred uh, 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 idea. But what I'm talking about is those who are grounded in, in scripture and have a very good uh, understanding behind what they're doing. And there's many people that I work with that do that. And the whole purpose of this is to bring forth God's plan for the state of Israel, the people of Israel and the world. And that is essentially what what I do in a nutshell behind uh, security and other things that I do. <laughs> I want you to go get some sleep. Uh, but if there's yes, one sir. thing you want, uh, as the Americans specifically to or the rest of the world, really, but to Americans specifically to know about the last week um, uh, and what you're doing on the ground there. What, what would that be? I just want you to know that our people have been slaughtered. They have been raped, mutilated, tortured in, in, in unmentionable ways that I can't go through. And I'm actually not even sharing those things because I don't want the enemy to gloat over what they did to our people. And I want you to know that there are men like me and women like me who have stepped up to the plate to do our job, to restore the safety, security of our people, and we will do whatever it takes. And I want you to know that at the same time, we are having a very, we're struggling through our mission because it's, it's, it does take a toll physically, emotionally, and all that. And so for any of you who believe in God and want to pray for us, I encourage you to do that. Pray for the men and women. Pray for the civilians who have been shell-shocked who I have to restore uh, trust in because when I see, when a little child now sees me, he sees the jihadist scumbag that did horrible things to either his own family or to his neighbors. And so we have to win hearts and minds of my own people, hearts and minds of my own people. Who would have ever thought of such a sick scenario? And thank you Hamas and ISIS and Iran and Russia for your dirty, dirty, merciless, heartless tactics. But the dogs of war are, are we're preparing and we're coming to get you. You attacked us, we're coming back for you. So that's what I want people to know. We're, we've made our resolve. And yes, it's hard. I'm not going to lie. And I and and we feel those prayers. I feel those prayers when I go on these missions. I've been the coolest, calmest I've ever been on any mission, and it's been the most dangerous missions I've been on in my life, in all of my military career. So thank you for all of you praying for us. Please keep praying for us because we need that heaven, <laughs> heavenly uh, uh, um, um, help. To, to get through what we need to get through. So thank you for those praying. We, we really, really thank you for that. Thank you, pastors and church groups and uh, obviously my own community, the Jewish community. You know, thank you. For, I've gotten many responses that, you know, our synagogue's praying for you all. Um, thank you, every one of you who are praying for us. God bless you guys uh, for doing that because we need your prayers and we appreciate your prayers. So thank you. Well, they'll be uh, continuing. Those prayers will be inbound and uh, get some rest. And uh, sure. I think please reach out if there's anything I can do. And I'll be, uh, you 
you know, doing what I can from here. So take care out there and please give all the guys, uh, you know, let them know I'm thinking about them, please. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to the Danger Close podcast, an Ironclad original presented by Navy Federal Credit Union. To stay up to date with Duran on the front lines, you can follow him on Instagram at K-E-I-D-A-R-D-O-R-O-N. You can follow me on the social channels at Jack Carr USA. Officialjackcar.com is the website. Click on shop in the upper right-hand corner for the merch. And if you got something out of this podcast, be sure to leave a five-star rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. Until the next time, take care out there. Stay safe. Be strong. Keep fighting.